Baba Wallace, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm doing as good as I can do during this period. The bigger question is, how are you? I mean, you must be feeling a range of emotions right now, you know, to have the FBI involved, you know, uh, in, in looking into why there was a noose that was found in the garage where your car is going to be parked. You know, you were told this by NASCAR. This blew up into a giant thing. And then the FBI comes out saying, it is a noose, but we don't think anybody left it there for Baba. How are you doing right now? You nailed every emotion on the head there, just going through all of that stuff, being uh, being just kind of sitting on the phone. Really, the last couple of weeks, uh, I still don't know how my battery is is has enough juice in it to keep going. Uh, on my phone and mentally and, and physically, I just mentally drained, physically drained. But uh, all in all, it's okay. It's just part of the process. You know, you learn you learn new things each and every day. Um, you're tested sometimes in a positive way, sometimes in a, in a negative light, and you're always learning from from each and every day, you know? So uh, I'm, I'm okay. When we deal with celebrities or people in the spotlight, whether it's politicians or, or athletes or, or, you know, musicians, whoever it is, we forget that there's a human being involved in the story as well. Talk me through, like, what that felt like, like, when, when NASCAR comes to you and says there's a noose, because I think a lot of people may not understand the world that you're in and what your journey has been in from the time you came out and said, we need to get rid of the Confederate flag. Yeah, uh, ever since then, I knew um, it would be a whirlwind of, of, of emotions, of comments, of hate, of, of positive light as well. And uh, ever since the removal of the Confederate flag and ever, ever since being vocal in... in you know, of, of being a human being. It's not about being a vocal. It's about being human, being a human being, like you said. And I've been proud to, to kind of, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't really know how to word it. Like I said, I'm still learning, but to step away from Bubba Wallace, the athlete, and to step up as Bubba Wallace, the human, for the first time, and not be so, I don't know if I can touch that. I don't know if I can say these types right. of things. Right, right. I'm letting that guard down. And I do it with the utmost respect of all of my partners, my sponsors, my race team, people that are supporting me. They, with me doing this, they have to know the bigger picture of everything. It's not about racing. It's about race. So ever since having that voice and being vocal about it, coming out and, and, and standing my ground uh, to helping NASCAR um, uh paint a new picture for the sport and for the next generation to see and latch on to getting rid of the Confederate flag. I, I knew like, all right, here we go. Roll the sleeves up. It's about to be tough. Right. And, um, you know, Talladega was on our list of fans are going to be back. Confederate flag's gone. Heightened awareness around Talladega. After the race was called, obviously weather came through, delayed the whole day. I get a phone call from Steve Phelps, president. And it was a phone call like a pissed off parent, like you did something really bad. We've all had those phone calls. Those are the ones that still all stick right. in your head. Yeah. And it was much worse than that. He says, I need to talk to you in person. And he comes in and walks in my bus and he could barely speak and he had tears flowing. And I knew that that moment, it was really bad. Still thinking that I did something. And he had said there was a hate crime committed. So I immediately thought of my family and got worried. You know, stomach kind of dropped because I was fine, but I hadn't been in contact with my family for a little bit. And he told me that there was a noose found in my garage. And I was I was relieved that it wasn't family, but I was emotional just because it's like, man, someone could go out of their way to to, to portray a, a, an image of hate, a symbol of hate. And so I was going through that. I, I walked back over to Ryan Blaney's bus and just in tears. And, you know, we hugged it out, told him the incident there. And, and uh, I actually did not go get food. I stayed in my bus all night and, and was trying to get a clear head and had a ton of outreach once we had put our statements out there of everything that I was going through and what had happened. So we get through the race and we also obviously have that awesome display of love, compassion, understanding, unity there before the, the race, all the drivers come together, all the, the whole industry came together, surrounded my car. What do you think the significance of that moment of that moment was of having all of the drivers push your car out to the front? All of the drivers go like, no, we stand with Baba because they know how tumultuous it, it means. Like you cried. Yeah. And I think a lot of people felt that moment. Why did you think that was such an important image for people to see? Yeah, no, that was, um, that was powerful right there. 
from the moment I was being pushed down pit lane there, I was bawling, gathered my thoughts, got out, turned around and seen all the drivers there, started bawling again and took a selfie there. And just I wanted to capture that moment because that will be one that will stick with me for forever. It shows that we can let down that side and be human beings like we talked about earlier and show love and compassion for our fellow competitors, our brothers and our sisters to uh, to to come together as one. So that was right. uh, that was an incredible moment. So it was well, definitely it was definitely tough to kind of comprehend all that and then climb in and go race. Tell me, were, were you relieved when the FBI came out with their report? Because this happened to Bubba Wallace. I mean, you were the story. How did you feel about this? Like, were you relieved? What was your emotion? When I had first heard about it, Trevor, I wanted to make sure that this wasn't going to be the case because I knew the backlash that would come with it. Mm -hmm. And I had questioned my crew chief. I had questioned my crew member who was African-American who had found it and who was outraged by it. He did. I I talked to him multiple times. He had checked throughout the garages that were around us and nobody had a knot like we had on our garage pool in the shape of a noose, a full blatant noose. So this is not like a regular, this is not like a, like a NASCAR style of tying a knot. It's not like it was on all the other garages. No, this was, this was there and it could have been there in, in 2019, which is, that's, that's great. It wasn't directed towards me. So to answer your question, I was relieved, but I knew that this was gonna flip to the negative side and, right. and all of that side of everything was just gonna come flowing out because people say it's a hoax compare me yeah. to Jeffrey, you know, Smollier, like, I mean, just outrageous stuff. But we checked, my, my, my crew member, David Crops, checked each and every garage around us. Not one of them had anything close to resemble what we had. So it was there, um, but it had been there. So when they found that evidence, that was good. I was like, okay, my family wasn't targeted. I wasn't targeted. Okay. But now there's a whole new realm that we have to deal with. I know there are a lot of fans, you know, that I try and read what people are saying and just try and get a sentiment. And I, I know there are some people, a lot of people support you, I'd say even most, but there are some fans who'd be like, Baba, I supported you and I, I never made it a black or white thing. Why did you have to bring any of these politics into NASCAR? What would you say to them? I am not a political person at all. I, I try to avoid that at all costs. I, I walk straight and narrow down the path that I want to walk on. And, you know, it's, it's crazy when everybody's all supportive when the president is at the Daytona 500 and, and it's all fine. That's all political to me, you know? But when I bring in banning the Confederate flag and standing up for my African-American side of my family, who a lot feel like they don't have a voice and I'm carrying that, that weight, I'm carrying that flag for them. And so, um, you know, my, my pen tweet is not something I am saying. I am going around saying I'm the, I'm the African-American driver. Yep, I'm, I'm the African-American. I'm the black guy. It's simply saying you're going to hear about that from media, from other fans. You just, that's, that's how I'm going to be labeled. I've accepted it. You accept it. You embrace it and enjoy the journey. That's as simple as that. I've never once pulled the race card. As many people have accused me of pulling a race card, I... I am looked at as an African American guy because I, uh, the color of my skin, I am darker. I am not white. I am not. I am mixed, and and it's it's something that I've never once tried to bring in. I've, I've always tried to bring in the competitive nature. Don't mess with me. I won't mess with you. Let's race our hearts out, and that's it. And and now having a voice, having a platform, being vocal, standing up for what I believe is right, standing up for a race that feels defeated that is, is afraid to speak out because they don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to see my people go down like that. I want to stand up for them. I want to stand up with them, arm in arm, hand in hand, to show that, hey, I have a voice and I'm going to create change in my sport and my community. And I want you guys to be a part of it. And so there's a whole balancing act of, of, of emotions. You, you go through that side on, on Monday through Friday. Mm-hmm. And then, or Monday through Saturday, really, and then you climb in the car to go race. There's a light switch. If you've seen Richard Petty and us uh, and myself right there before climbing in, he was touching the back of my head. He had said, "This is where you get to turn off that switch and get to go have right. fun and get away from all the madness." So that's that's what it is. Well, you know what, Bob? As you say, I'm glad your family's safe. I'm glad you are too. Um, and relief is the feeling that I think a lot of people feel right now. So good luck to you for the rest of the season, and uh, congratulations 
uh, on, on all of your work and um, how you're speaking out. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Tell Lewis I said what's up. Will do.